Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have the Black Panther. Uh, this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe film from 2018. It runs two hours and 16 minutes long, and it stars uh, the late, great Chadwick Boseman. Uh, when I've watched this, I honestly, I don't think I've watched this. I watched it a number of times in the theaters, and I watched it uh, in a marathon leading up to Infinity War, uh, my friends and I had done. And yeah, yeah, it's a... Uh, did we do that? Yeah, we had to because it was it came out just before that, and I went to the theater. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it uh, it's a huge deal, and uh, I forgot that when the, when Chadwick died, um, Marvel changed the opening. You know the Marvel uh, Studios logo, uh, the the normal, you know flash of all the different heroes from all the different uh, films building up into the Marvel Studios logo. They changed that completely to in tribute to Chadwick Boseman. And right there, I was just like, cool. It broke my heart because it's, it's, it's a humongously crazy loss. And uh, you can hear me blather about that in the Chadwick Boseman tribute uh, video from a couple months back. Uh, they did one on 2020, uh, looking at his career and his impact as the Black Panther in this film. Um, but yeah, it's this is the first time I've been able to just sort of watch it on my own and take it in. And yes, I attempted to have it on since I'd already seen it. That's a lot of times I'll put things on in the background on a screen while I do other stuff. And it's the kind of film that it just pulls your attention. And uh, there's so many little connections here and there. Um, obviously, right now, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is more than halfway through its run on Disney+. Plus. There's a lot of story beats that are similar in this. Um, speaking about uh, revolution, uh, privilege uh, versus a, a feeling of disenfranchisement uh, from one's culture, uh, rebellion, uh, it's power I mean, these are norm a lot of power obviously is a normal uh, concept uh, bantered bantered thrown about uh, in most superhero films obviously um, but you can see there's a there's a number of similarities and it's no coincidence that Wakanda is involved in both that show and in this and there are, again there's so many uh, <laughs> even though you know age of Ultron doesn't get its due um, when it comes to um, the rest of the MCU. It's not considered the greatest film. Uh, it is still a humongous keystone, connector of so much. I mean, it it is a humongous uh, piece of the WandaVision uh, Foundation, and in this, uh, in uh, Age of Ultron, we get to see, um, we first see Claw, and that feeds into Black Panther because he's one of the big bads in this. By the way, Andy Serkis, who plays uh, Claw, Obviously, a lot of you know he plays Gollum in the Lord of the Rings films, so it was kind of neat to see him and uh, Martin Freeman, who plays Bilbo Baggins, uh, sort of interact together again, but not one who's completely CGI'd. You know, there, there was no um, motion capture nods, nod, nodules all over uh, Andy Serkis this time around. So he got to, he's one of the most fun parts of the film because he's he plays a guy with a big personality. And uh, it's always, I mean, Claw is a classic Avengers villain. And, it's, and he's kind of ridiculous looking <laughs> if you look at him in the comics compared to how he looks in the movie, uh, especially here. Uh, but he's ridiculous in a personality way in, in the movies. Uh, he's so much cooler with his transforming uh, sound blaster kind of arm uh, in the movies, but still, I, I've always wondered if they were ever going to bring him in, if he was, how he would look, what he look like, the being of living sound, you know, but no, he's just a really noxious, obnoxious uh, New Zealander, or is he an Australian? I mean, they shot in New Zealand, Lord of the Rings in New Zealand, but I, I mean, still, I, I, sorry, either way, um, one of the great things is this, this is so beautifully cast, from Angela Bassett playing uh, T'Challa's mom, uh, the Letitia Wright playing Shuri, who is um, the sister, obviously, of T'Challa, and she's fun, and she's irreverent, and she's 
kind of the, um, I don't know, the, t the tension valve in a lot of situations where she can say s something that's funny uh, and just be a little bit goofy, but she is still the smartest person in the room uh, in any room she's in. And one of the great things uh, also that I really love about this is that people have been like, hey, who's going to be the next James Bond after, uh, oh, what's his face? Daniel Craig is done. Um, we should have a we should have a black James Bond, black James Bond. Yeah, well, we kind of sort of in this. There's kind of a nod to a black James Bond in this because in Shuri, uh, T'Challa has his cue because there's a sequence in this where you know T'Challa he's now newly made king and he's walking through her lab and she's showing off all the gadgets just as Q used to do whenever James would come walking through uh, home base and, uh, you know, describing, oh, this this uh, pen is a laser beam or it ex expels gas or whatever, you know, and these shoes will explode or something, you know, those kind of things. So Shuri uh, uh, does a nice little riff on the whole Q uh, mode, and she's pretty much there to give Black Panther all of his skills beyond the uh, power of the pa Black Panther. Um, so yeah, uh, I really shouldn't really have to tell you what the story about this. Uh, what tell you about the story? You probably already know. And if you don't, if you haven't seen this, well, that's your own darn darn fault. But um, it, it, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But uh, this is this is more. Um, it's more of a functional introduction to the world of Wakanda, and uh, we are sort of, from what I understand, Ryan Coogler, the director here is working on a project with Disney Plus to create a World of Wakanda type series where it's not necessarily focused simply on T'Challa, the Black Panther. R right now at this point, we don't know if they lack a Black Panther in the MCU. That's not been addressed yet. That's, I mean, obviously we don't have Patrick Bo uh, not Patrick Boseman, Chadwick Boseman. We don't have Chadwick, but... Um, and they said they're not going to CGI him into stuff, and they're not going to they're not going to recast him at least anytime soon. It's it's going to be a while, I think. If they ever, if they ever recast him, it's going to be a almost a generation past. You know, twenty years goes by when they you know people forget what nine eleven was. So twenty years later, what 9-11? 20 years after the loss of Chadwick Boseman, maybe they'll go who. And we, they'll be able to recast it. They'll recast everybody. It'll be a brand new Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, everything else. So yeah, don't worry about it. They'll they'll reboot the MCU if they have to, but they don't. You know, we're not going to worry about that right now. The idea is, yeah, we're going to get more Wakanda stories with the actors, uh, probably Shuri and uh, uh, Yoke. By the way, um, you notice that uh, we have uh, one of the. Dora Milaje in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Sorry, spoilers. Uh, <laughs> she's the the one that uh, we see. She's the second Dora Milaje that uh, we see in Black Panther, other than Ayoke, uh, who is by the played by the amazingly wonderful uh, uh, Denai Guerrera. I hope I pronounced her name right. Yeah, Denai Guerrera. You know her from The Walking Dead as. Uh, Kid is <laughs> Michonne. Okay. Oh, my brain is not working today. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Denai is freaking awesome. Everybody in this shines. In Michael B. Jordan, who we last saw as the Human Torch in the not so great 2015 Fantastic Four. Uh, not that he was a bad Johnny Storm. Again, a lot of the times it's never down to the actors, it's down to the concept. But uh, in this, he plays Killmonger, who is. Oh, I don't want to really ruin it, but let's just say he's at odds with the Black Panther. And he's from America, and he's pretty much there to take the throne. He's really there to challenge uh, <laughs> T'Challa for the throne. And uh, he has the rights to make that challenge. So how does he have that those rights? Well, you have to watch the movie. Uh, yeah, there's, there's just a lot to this, and... You get to understand. Uh, we get to understand why Wakanda is closed off from the world. We get to see, see a lot about their history, and uh, is it justified? In a lot of ways, yeah. In other ways, 
uh, Wakanda, which had the power to do right the wrongs and stop a lot of evil, um, sat back and did nothing. And, and, and uh, that's the problem Killmonger uh, has with Wakanda. And that's why he wants to take it over and make it a power unlike anything and to help the disenfranchised, uh, the people, uh, that the culture that he's from, uh, rise up and make things right. And, and in many ways, he's not wrong. It's a matter of how he goes about it that is, in some ways, very wrong. Well, no, it's, it's war. He wants to wage war on the world uh, in order to right what he believes is wrong, and uh, what is wrong uh, with a lot of the world culture today, especially where he grew up in America. <laughs> I'm not going to stand here as a, a white man to tell you that <laughs> he's wrong, he's just doing it wrong, maybe he shouldn't protest this way. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, so yeah, Killmonger is not completely wrong in his assessment of how things are. Again, it's T'Challa, who is a king, who has ultimate power, who has technology at his hands unlike anything else on Earth. He's the establishment, and yet we're, and we're rooting for him. Um, but in the end, who really wins uh, this battle between these two uh, mindsets? And, uh, well, you'll have to watch the movie to find out. I mean, there's lots of questions. You could talk about this for hours, days, and there's probably other videos out there that, that do. Some that are probably really bad. Worse than this. <laughs> Some that are probably really super racist. Um, but, yeah, I don't want to be among them. So, hey, uh, watch this. Love it. It's, it's, it is 100% very much part of the MCU. Um, it's very much its own thing. I, I kind of... You know, we have different, all the different films have their own genre. They're not, they're not a superhero genre. You want to call it that many times, but it's not. It's, I mean, we get, um, we get a political thriller with uh, Winter Soldier. We get, um, we get a sci-fi uh, action comedy with Guardians of the Galaxy. We get uh, a World War II, uh, a war movie with Captain America, the first Avenger. And it's just, we have a whole lot of different genres here and there all over the place. And this, I have found hard to define uh, just exactly what it is. Because they don't stay in Wakanda. A lot of the film is in Wakanda. Um, and, I mean, part of it, it takes place in South Korea. And uh, the, the Battle of Busan, there was uh, in, the, in the casino in Busan, there was something I wanted to tell you, and now I forgot, but it's it's kind of important. It's kind of really cool. Like, go away, picture. I don't want to see you. Um, yeah, it's cool. There's, I'm sure going to think of it as soon as I stop recording, but why drag this out any further? <laughs> um, maybe I'll think of it in the time that I load up this page. Um, it's really cool. It's fun. Uh... Yeah, oh, Stan Lee makes an appearance, obviously, in that sequence. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I fall in love with the Lupita Nyong'o anytime I see her. She is just freaking gorgeous and amazing in so many different ways. So, yeah, it's a... it's People can poo-poo all they want over this movie. Uh, I don't... Yes, I actually have people who are like... Black Panther, it's not a very good movie, but they make a big deal about it. To each their own. But, yeah. Let's pick tomorrow's episode. 34. 34. I'm staying low. I'm going even lower than Black Panther. 34. Oh. Hmm, okay, it's a movie. Not sure what this is, but I'm guessing it takes place in high school. Um because it's called Avalon High. Unless I'm completely misreading the, the use of the word high. I doubt it's a dope-smoking movie. So, Avalon High on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye.